In this video, we're going to go over subqueries as it relates to advanced SQL. So subqueries are basically inner queries embedded within outer queries. So for example, if I was asked to show all customers who have placed an order, I want to look for a list of all the customer IDs inside of the order table. So to do this, I'd say select name from customer where customer ID is in, and then the subquery is select distinct customer ID from order. So if I were to run select distinct customer ID from order, that would give me all the unique customer IDs that have ever placed an order and then I would just look in that list and if there was a customer in that list it would return the name of that customer. So here I am back at the server I'm going to go ahead and run this query and you can see a list of all the customers that have placed orders. Now there are two types of subqueries. There's the non-correlated and the correlated subquery. The non-correlated subquery basically means that the inner query is processed completely before the outer query. So take for example the query we just ran, I could run the inner query without needing to have the outer query information. So to show you what I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and select this inner query and run this separately. And you'll notice that this just returns a list of all the unique customer IDs. Now a correlated subquery is an inner query that uses data from an outer query, meaning that I cannot run an inner query without the existence of the outer query at the same time. So for example, if I wanted to show all orders that include furniture finished in cherry, I'm going to select the distinct order ID from order line with an alias of OL and then I'm going to look where exists. Exists means if a row is returned then we'll return an order ID. If a row is not returned that matches some condition then we won't return the order ID. So I'm going to say in the subquery select one which means that if there is a condition that's met it will be true meaning that one will return and so that we can display those order IDs. I'm going to say select one from product ID P where P dot product ID equals OL. Now OL comes from the the outer query so ols dot product id and finish equals cherry so here i am back at the server i've copied this over I'm going to go ahead and run this and we see all the order IDs that had products on the order with the finish of cherry. Now if I go ahead and try to run this subquery by itself I get an error message saying that it cannot find ol.productID and that's true because there is no ol in the subquery alone. One of the main functionalities of a subquery is using aggregate functions. So we can use aggregate functions such as sum, average, count, max, min, etc. in the outer queries where clause. So for example if I wanted to show all products whose price is higher than average, I'm going to look at the from statement first and I'm going to create a temporary table. This table is going to be built based off of the query. So this query is going to say select average price as average price. So I'm going to have one column of average price with the data of one row of the actual average price. And this is going to come from the product table. Now this temporary query I'm going to give an alias of A. So this is a table of A with one column of average price. Additionally I'm going to select the product table and I'll give that an alias of P. So then we'll go back to the select statement. I'm going to display the description and the price from the product table and the average price from the temporary average price table I created where the conditions of the product's price is greater than the average price from the average price table that I created. So here we are back at the server. I'm going to go ahead and run this query and we see that all these products have a price that's greater than the average price of $534.63. So as I mentioned previously, some of the queries that we try to do with subqueries could be accomplished with joins, such as in the case below. If I wanted to show the customer name, street, city, state, and zip code for order number 8, I can just select name, street, city, state, zip code from customer where the customer ID is in a list of customer IDs from the order table where the order ID equals 8. I can accomplish this with a join by saying the same thing, select name, street, city, state, zip code from customer C, join order O on C.customer ID equals o.customerid where order ID equals 8. Now the problem here with running a subquery for a non-correlated subquery is that a subquery is only going to give you the information from the outer query so you can only select the columns from the customer table. However let's say you wanted to get information from the order table you could only get that in the join as you see below because it is in the outer query. So I'm going to run both of these queries at the same time and show you that there's no difference between the two. So this first query as you can see has each furniture with its associated information and I go to the second query and it has the exact same information. Now watch what happens if I try to include like the order ID. 
in the subquery. I run this and it's going to say can't find order ID. However, if I come over here and say order ID in the join, you'll notice that it does return the results with the order ID. So one thing that might be helpful is to draw a mental map of how all the tables are connected so that you can be able to connect them using the primary key foreign key pairs as you go through this. So for example, if we were to build a subquery that asked us to show the payment date and amount of payments of orders placed by contemporary casuals with the payment type of deposit. And what we'll see here is we need the payment table because of the payment date and amount. We need the order table because that's going to allow us to connect to the customer table where we find contemporary casuals. And we need the payment type of deposit. And what do we want to return is going to be the table we start with. So from the payment table, we get payment date and amount. Eventually, we want to get contemporary casuals, which comes from the customer table, specifically the name column. And we want the description from the payment type table. In order to get to customer, I need to connect through order. So I'm going to connect to order through order ID and then to customer through customer ID. And then I'm going to connect to payment type through payment type ID. So what this is going to look like in a query is I'm going to say select payment date and amount from the payment table and then I want to join that to the order table using a subquery so I'm going to say where order ID is in a list of order ID so I'm going to select order ID from the order table and put that in tick marks and then I want to get to the customer table so I'm going to say where customer ID is in a list of customers so I'm going to select customer ID I'm going to move this over so you can see how this continues so I'm going to select customer ID from customer and then I'm interested in contemporary casuals. So I'm going to say where name equals contemporary casuals. You'll notice that I have two closing parentheses because I have two open parentheses. So now what I'm going to do is go back to the beginning of the line and I want to connect payment to payment type. So I'm going to say and payment type ID is in and then I'm going to select the payment type ID from the payment type table. And I'm interested in those where the description equals the so I'm going to go ahead and run this query and we can see that there are two payments associated with contemporary casuals that have a description of deposit and I'm only displaying the payment date and the payment amount from the payment table. So now I want you to attempt this learning activity. So try each of these five queries on your own, pause this video, and then come back to compare your answers. All right, welcome back. I've copied the queries over and commented them out. So let's go ahead and address this first query. So using a subquery, I want to show the employee names for all employees who have the skill of router. So let's go to our entity relationship diagram and we see the employee connects to employee skill and employee skill connects to skill where description has router. So I'll need to connect these three tables together. So in order to do that, I'm going to say select and then I'm interested in just the employee name. So we'll do first name and last name from the employee table where and then what's common between the employee table and the employee skill table is employee ID. So I'm going to join based off of those in a subquery using employee ID in select employee ID from employee skill and then I want to connect connect employee skill to the skill table using skill ID. So I'm going to say where skill ID in select skill ID from the skill table. And then I'm interested in those that have a skill router. So I'm going to say where description equals router. We'll go ahead and run this query and we can see that these two employees have the skill of router. Okay, let's go to the next query, which asks us to show all customers whose shipping state is in Ohio. So let's go to the entity relationship diagram and we're interested in customers with a shipping state of of Ohio. So I'm going to select all customers. So select star from customer. And then what's the same between customer and shipping address is customer ID. So that's the common column. So I'm going to say where customer ID is in and then select customer ID from shipping address. And I'm interested in those with the ship state of Ohio. So I'm going to say where ship state equals Ohio. We'll go ahead and run this query and we can see that there are two customers with shipping states in Ohio. This next query asks us to show all products whose price exceeds the maximum price of any bookcase. So we're dealing with the product table. This is going to be a query that's going to use aggregate functions. So let's go ahead and select all products. So select star from product. And then we need to find out what the maximum price of any bookcase is. So let's go ahead and create a temporary table. So we'll say select max price as bookcase price from the product table where the product description is like and then we're looking for anything with the word bookcase. So we'll look for bookcase in percentages and quotes. And then we'll give this new table an alias of bookcase price with BP. Let's go back and give our product table an alias of P. So now I've selected two tables and I'm interested in only those where the products price, so where P dot price is greater than the bookcase price. So I'm going to say BP dot bookcase price. We'll go ahead and run this. 
and we can see that all of these products have a higher price than the maximum bookcase price. Okay, this next query asks us to do something a little different. It asks us to change the payment, which uses an update query instead of a select query. So we're gonna change the payment from cash to credit for the customer Eastern Furniture. So let's go to our ERD. And what we're going to do is change the comment from cash to credit for the customer Eastern Furniture. So we're going to have to connect payment to order and order to customer in order to use that. So using a subquery, we would say update payment is the table I'm going to change. We're going to set the comment equal to credit. And then I'm going to combine payment to order. So I'm going to say where order ID in select order ID from order and put that in tick marks. And then I'm going to connect order to customer. So I'm going to say where customer ID in, and then I'll say select customer ID from customer. And then ultimately I want to only look for the customer of Eastern Furniture. So I'll say where name equals Eastern Furniture. So I'll go ahead and run this query and it says that five rows were affected. So we successfully changed the payment from cash to credit for the customer Eastern Furniture. For this last query, we're asked to remove the skill of quality control from the employee Phil Morris. So let's go ahead and click on the ERD and we're going to be dealing with skill, employee, skill, and employee again. This time we're going to remove the skill of quality control from the employee Phil Morris. So essentially what I want to do is delete the record here which connects Phil Morris to the skill of quality control. I don't want to delete the skill and I don't want to delete the employee so I'm going to start with the employee skill. So I'm going to say delete from employee skill and then I'm going to connect to employee first so I'm going to say where employee ID in select employee ID from employee where and then I'm going to look for Phil Morris using the first and last name. So first name equals Phil and last name equals Morris. Then I need to go to skill to find quality control. So I'll say and skill ID in select skill ID from the skill table where the description equals quality control. I'll go ahead and run this query and it says that one row was affected. 